Casey Kerwin. I'm 25 years old. I'm a professional sim racer uh, in the eNASCAR series on iRacing, uh, as well as I do some uh, Twitch streaming as well uh, on the iRacing stuff, and yeah, that's what I did. I uh, won the 2022 eNASCAR championship. Um, I also have been competing in the uh, MC Sports Championship last year and this year I'm doing the same, so um, yeah, I do a bit of both. I'm a bit of a chicken, so I don't think real racing and hitting stuff at a high speed IRL is in my uh, aspirations, but uh, no, I just love the, the sim stuff and um, obviously kind of get to experience the racing part of it just uh, without the consequences of your life, so. Uh, not a whole lot. I know I've seen or heard from some friends of mine like in the NASCAR side that have obviously been in similar stuff. Um, obviously, I just know that it's very extreme and um, but I've obviously never felt it or anything, so um, yeah, it'll be cool. Very nice. Yeah, a little different than the home room. Just a tad. Yeah. yeah. Probably like five times bigger at least. Okay, so uh, a little background on, on this. This is uh, was a bit originally uh, created at Williams F1. Mm -hmm. It was then uh, sold through Williams Advanced Engineering, called a company called AB Dynamics. That's where we bought it. Um, so this this type of system um, was really originated at the highest levels of F1, and then trickled out into uh, other areas, um, both in the production car world and especially in the motorsport world. Yeah. Um, so we have headphones there, um, we have belts, um, so where all the belts, keys, yeah, locks, and like that. We get one over each shoulder here. Um, it doesn't need to be crazy tight, just it keeps you in there. Yeah. Um, whatever's comfortable. Um, headphones there, the audio is always live, um, so don't worry too much. Um, the center console does work, so you can stuff your belongings <laughs> there you go. in the center console there. You grab the headphones now, close the end. Um, one thing to note, don't get out on the side, come get you. Um, and I'll walk you through the whole track. a ghost car it'll reset every time that you cross the finish line starting from now that is a generic reference lap that we set earlier it's pretty good right off the bat I think he is a professional yeah at this. that's crazy <laughs> feeling a bit more than uh, I'm used to for sure it's uh yeah it's cool though like all the you kind of can feel just pretty much every obviously every bump you feel more and then I feel like even like kind of the uphill downhill you can kind of feel that like over crest off crest a bit more it's cool it's pretty impressive to see how the the sim driving experience transfers yeah. Something like this, because you were pretty much on it, like, lap three. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, that <laughs> felt pretty, pretty close. Amazing. Yeah, the, yeah, that was where, every time I kept crashing was just like, because I guess it's just, we're used to in sim, we can kind of, like, move our cameras, or just the way we sit probably is a bit, we don't also have, like, you know, helmets or anything, so we can probably see a bit better than, like, 
real guys can. So I feel like in this, it's probably with the eyesight being a bit better. Some stuff's a bit more blind in this than than uh, we have it in at home, where we can kind of cheat a little bit in that sense. Um, so yeah, they kept hitting curbs, and that's where I would crash and I'd go jump a curb. So did you practice moss board at home? I ran a couple laps, I think okay. yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, I normally do prototype stuff, so like, okay, I do stuff that's like pretty high down course, whereas in GT3 you actually have to slow down a little bit. So, okay. yeah, it was, uh, yeah, but it all feels pretty close. You just yeah, cool. can feel all the undulation and stuff better. So in general, do you feel like you're moving a lot? Not a lot? Um, not a ton, honestly. Yeah, like it, okay, I mean, no. it feels like you are, but it doesn't feel like over the top or extreme, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. Feels, it, like it feels like it, since it just moves like fluidly, you're not like really noticing it, I guess. Well, that's that's the idea. Yeah. Is to not notice yeah. it. If you, yeah. If you if it stands out too much, it's wrong. Yeah. So, exactly. And that's why we take that kind of less is more approach. Yeah. So. Mosh parts, I don't know, have some hills, and I can go fourth gear through a lot of corners and run a stabilized the rear a little mark. Um, as opposed to third, like this, I can just sit and fit because we have a lot of lateral grip with this vehicle model and you can use the curve a little. It's not too reactive to curves, um, so you can really get on them on this track. Yeah, I, I've, like, I'm very much like a, I'm not a big like settings person. Like, okay. A bunch of people are like, they gotta get them in and they gotta go like play with all the throttle shapes and all that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm just like, I'll just like, kind of I change like my stuff. I like you. Uh, be a good driver, a real driver. Yeah, like I feel, drive. yeah, exactly. I feel like I can just like get in and just kind of adjust like with my feet instead of needing like a setting to adjust it. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty consistent. He's uh, 115, 114, 114.5. So pretty good laps. But basically, yeah, throttle gear. Uh, this is compared to laps time by distance. Mm -hmm. Not really scaled right, but this tells you exactly. You know, by distance how much you're gaining and losing time-wise in right. your sector. All right, we'll get you going. It's all you. You and her. What was this time? Um, 73. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it's just very, uh, uh, not sensory overload, but just you, you, there's so many more senses than we get at home. Um, just obviously like even from the projection, like there's more surroundings, even if we, from like our normal triple screen stuff at home, uh, all the motion, you feel every bump and crest and uh, change in elevation, all that. Um, yeah, even the steering wheel and stuff was uh, <laughs> a bit, a little bit heavier than I'm used to, so I got a good, good arm workout as well, so. Um, but yeah, it was super fun to, to drive and um, all was still, the driving part I felt like was relatively the same. It was just, you had just more and more to, to feel off of, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I feel like it just, it's obviously more of a workout at home, at least for me, I'm just fully stationary. It's maybe a little bit of your arms, although like I said, this is still heavier steering um, and your legs, got a good left leg workout as well. Um, yeah, so you just kind of get thrown around a bit more like you would in a car. Um, so a little bit more physically active, but that's, I'd say, a good thing, so. And um, so how long have you been iRacing for? Uh, or sim racing? 10 years, more than 10 years. And yeah, why, why did you get into it? Uh, I've just loved racing and, um, yeah, it's just kind of an easy way to do it at home. You can kind of do whatever you want. For me, I've always, I was always a NASCAR fan. Um, so I just started doing the NASCAR stuff, but with everything you can do on iRacing, um, I got into the sports car stuff a couple years ago, and now I do that a lot as well. So, um, and it made me fall in love with sports car racing in real life as well. So, um, yeah, there's just so many different things you can try and have fun with on sim racing, and I feel like that's the beauty of it. Yeah, we um, 
It was pretty impressive because you, uh, you you beat Charlie's time in your first lap out. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I was just more on the limit. I crashed more, you know. <laughs> I ran a few laps at most sport uh, the other day on IRC just to get some references. Obviously, I've done it in prototype stuff, so like it's way way more high downforce to the high speed stuff. So I, I ran in the the Corvette GT3 to get some uh, some more reps with less downforce. 